It's your boy from the back another one. Yo, we got academics basically talking about a secret person that kind of hate Drake. Let's basically hear what he got to say and then get straight into who it is. With no friends, no allies, no one who really will stand up for him, all the popular rappers are going against him, including, yo, I found out Drake has an op that none of us know. That is a huge rapper that we all think is his friend. I found that out like two days ago. I won't even drop the name. I would like because I, I need to do more digging on that. It just seems, I mean, some of y'all have guessed it. Like, is he and him cool? But we're like, no, they got big records together. They're, no, that nigga hates him too. I'm like, what? What? How come everybody hate him? No, it's not Savage. It's not Savage. The only two friends Drake got with. All right, so basically, it seems like clearly there's another person that we don't know. Now, there's names like Travis Scott, Jay-Z. Uh, you know, those are the names that come to mind. Some people even saying Lil Baby, but Lil Baby, I would, I don't think he would have that reaction towards Lil Baby. I think it would be someone like maybe a Travis or a Jay-Z, but we kind of already knew Travis and Jay-Z, kind of. So, to me, the way he more alluded it, he the way he sounded sounded like it was someone that we really didn't know and i don't I, i'm trying to figure out who it really is because to me it was travis scott because travis scott was basically fighting with the entourage or the people that was with tyga and we know the whole situation with tyga and um travis scott which is over kylie jenner but the person that came right after travis scott when he broke up with Kylie Jenner, or they was they caught up or ended up splitting was Drake, and he he got there very quickly. Like he didn't even give it a, a chance to breathe a little bit. Not even like two or three different bodies over. He went right after. Like Drake has a thing where like when when you with your girl, he's either he's either gonna cheat on her with you, uh, cheat on her basically, or have her cheat on you with him, or. He's going to somehow find a way to have sex with her after you guys leave or you guys break up. Something that Kendrick Lamar alluded to in the in, in his diss song where he was like, you even smashed Wayne, girl, and then get his face tatted like a, apologizing. Like, why would you? What? You're you're a punk because what you want to do is like some weird cuckold thing. Like, it's like a reverse cuckold. I don't even know like how that really worked, but you just want to feel the inner workings of another person. Uh, you just want to feel the leftovers. Like, you a leftover ass dude. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? With that type of energy, like, I don't even understand how nobody would like you. Uh, apparently, he said it's not Nicki Minaj. That's what Academics said. It's not Lil Wayne. Uh, it's not 21 Savage. It's not Lil Durk. It's not none of those people. So it, le it leaves us to believe Travis Scott, Jay-Z, uh, maybe even Young Thug. Young Thug could be one of them that just don't like him because Young Thug is cool with Metro Boomin a lot more to me than, uh, and, and he said multiple hits together. And I just feel like Young Thug and Drake, you know, I feel like they were a duo uh, or possibly could have been a bigger duo if they made more music together. But every song they have together from even more life to now, I mean, they have a lot of songs together. To me, to me that was hits personally that, that i enjoyed uh but now i'm like wow okay now most likely it could be thug because thug is someone we didn't hear hear from and when kendrick was like thug made you feel like you were slime in your head i don't know i don't know i honestly think it could be that i don't think it's quavo i don't think it's uh the people you know kendrick lamar named i also feel like party next door should hate drake a lot more I don't know why he doesn't. I feel like his career could be a lot bigger without Drake. But for some reason, he's extremely, extremely loyal to Drake. And I kind of understand why he's a cancer. Like me, you know what I'm saying? We just a loyal sign. So I can understand him being loyal to a default. But bro, like he really holding, he been holding you back. Like you should be like, you know what I'm saying? Up there, up there. And to me, you are up there, up there party. But I'm just saying like you wrote all of this man hits and they just work just got diamond or whatever, right? With Rihanna and Drake, right? Guess who wrote that song? Party Next Door wrote that whole entire song for both of them. So the fact that he, he just watching his work being like, just given away and just profited bit profited off of at the maximum. I'm just like, man, like he deserved way more praise. But besides that, I'm really thinking it's most likely Travis Scott at this moment. But let's basically get into academics speaking on the the mob ties reference track. So let me clarify my thoughts on 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 this. Um so obviously we've now heard and here it is. If you guys don't know, this is the mob reference track. What's important to note is that the hook is taken 
pretty much as is, and then the verses are slightly changed. There's a couple words changed, um, maybe slight ad libs, but but pretty much the the core of the song is Vori, right? And, and that's the hook and the flow. That's it, right? Drake added some verse. Before I even just let it keep going, academics, you are the biggest caper for Drake because we literally just heard that uh, reference track and the whole entire, I mean, the whole entire concept of the song, words too as well, lyrics were all voice. Literally, there was no thing that Drake had to add to make it an actual song of his, to even make it like it was collabing. Not just flow and not just K- like not even, bro, every little thing, even the ad libs. Let's keep it going. Let's, let's let it rock out and then we're going to give our reactions after. This is honestly not the most spectacular verses, but they were cool and they worked for the song. And yeah. Now, obviously, number one, I do realize this is still the era where even though the battle you know isn't ongoing as people might think it is people are still using or looking for reasons to doubt drake so people have tried to use me cons- un- consecutively to try to be like oh if access this drake's really down bad and, and that's one thing i don't really like that but but whatever i i will also respond to that though but based on what i said and also based on the track that came out this is exactly how I feel about this Mob Ties um, reference track. As a true fan of Drake, I was hurt. I was hurt, and, and I was disappointed. And I'm still disappointed. And the reason why I'm disappointed is not because the record was referenced by Vori. The reason why is because I look at Drake as a hit factory. And if you're going to, you know, it's a reason why half of these niggas take so long to produce music. Drake is like McDonald's for music. Like, hit, 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 hit. Now, keep in mind, if Drake is fucking 10 bitches a week, he's at courtside three times a week, he's in Turks, like, for six months. Like, it's impossible that he... I I, I know Yachty came and told me the story of him writing... um, uh, uh, what was that shit called? Churchill Downs in like 11 minutes. But bro, like creativity just doesn't come that quick. It, it just doesn't, right? It takes time to come in. And this is just me as a fan. I've realized that, you know, that's why I'm not mad at the Jumbo Tron shit popping. Yeah, Drake ain't gonna write every record. Right? And he's like, if we like that type of Drake, a lot of us want that. Re- and we can't be hypocrites neither, right? The same thing I praise Drake for, I can't get mad at him for. Why? Why do I praise him? I say, yo, Drake, I'm glad that you don't take three years to create a fucking song. You know who does? Kendrick and them niggas. Part of that is probably, yo, I'm going to keep a bop out there. Now, I'm try- maybe you say I'm splitting hairs here, but um, I look at Jumbotron shit popping, even Mob Ties, in the same kind of ilk as a lit song, but I'm still disappointed because when it comes to times that Drake got a got his back against the wall or got a distinct message to send. I expect that to come from the artist himself. That's a fact. I expect that to come from his frustration, his aggression, his just, yo, these niggas like, like when I heard, you you gotta remember, this is coming after the whole thing with, with Pusha T. And he's thinking, yo, he's been saying the whole game against him, Jay-Z. Now we see Kanye and this and other people. So he's like sick of these. I'm expecting that to be an innate thought. I'm not expecting him to be a person who's picking out of a catalog to be like, hey, what song sounds good that I could put out? No, no, I'm not expecting that. And that's my disappointment. It's not the fact that the record, because the record ain't that lyrical. The record ain't that lyrical, just to be very clear. It's a bop. And by the way, I also have to apologize to Vori <clears throat> because I should have knew this shit was going to come because after I, I, there was a clip, <clears throat> there was a clip where I spoke. Okay, he is credited, but he ain't write nothing, nigga. <laughs> I want to apologize to Vori. And, and I kind of, I kind of knew, I knew something was going to happen or come because Vori messaged me after this. And Vori said, act, muggers. It's crazy that people are sending me videos of you, you know, 
speaking ill of my name. And I was like, no, nah, I wasn't trying to speak ill of your name. I was just, you know, my goat is Drake. And I don't think Drake would need you to for a fucking record. I'm sorry. And after hearing the record, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm here to say I'm wrong. It's fine. I am wrong. This song was the brainchild and the creation and the genius of Vori. This was a genius of Vori with the addition of Drake's performance and him coloring within the lines. That's what this was. Drake. <laughs> this nigga just said, is Drake coloring within the lines? Like this nigga didn't even make nothing. All he doing is just doing a coloring book and just choosing which song sounds the littest. And then he just colors within the lines. Yo, this caping is crazy. How can this man be your goat still academics? There's no way. He did his thing. Drake, of course, you know, I don't think none of these... Uh, by the way, this is an amazing reference, too. Like, this reference, I actually think, you know, some of the party reference, I, I think people sleep on party a bit. I think party were creating those knowing that they were never going to go out. So people be like, damn, they, that sounds flat. Like, even Legend just sounds so flat. Then when Drake performs, it sounds so great. Yeah, it sounds fucking mix and mastered in a million dollar studio. You know, duh. And like with the best shit ever. So Drake's version is 10 times better. And even though I think Drake's version of Monetize is still better than Vori's, Vori's is fire. I think if Vori dropped this track himself, it's 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 still a hit. Still a hit. So anyway, so I, I did want to apologize to Vori for that, for that because, you know, that was the fan in me. And that was the fan in me real, um, not wanting to believe that a song that, you know, when I think about that era, and, I, and I'll pull up Scorpion for y'all. When I think about that era where people were saying that Drake lost his first rap battle, um, man, I love that album, bro. That album's classic to me. Like, I, I, if you guys have been listening to me, I've been saying this album's classic to me. It means so much to me because I do think it takes something special. Remember even, like, recently with this whole Kendrick shit, I'm like, I can't wait for Drake's next project. You know why? Bro, it's something when the greats' backs are against the wall, they provide the greatest shit they could do. When you listen to this album, Survival, the, even the fucking motherfucking titles is telling the story. Survival, nonstop, elevate. Like Emotionless. Like Emotionless is a song that I've played. I used to just play at Nausea, and I was just like, like. All right, that's basically all of the clips I'm going to play for y'all. Basically, I'm just trying to give y'all a gist or basically show y'all how academics have lost his Whatever the thing is that he feels like Drake is this super hit maker machine guy, he's coming into the realization that Drake is a puppet in the in one of the greatest actors ever. One of the greatest karaoke singers ever, to be honest, if we're looking at it. You guys got to understand, the guy is extremely talented at reading a script. He came in the game as an actor, so his skills are very defined and refined in acting. That's why when he goes and does NS SNL skits and does other skits, he does skits extremely well. I think he's a great actual actor. I like him in Anchorman. I like when he plays quirky, weird, like weird characters and stuff like that, or the funny guy. He's a funny guy when he's on camera. When it comes to rapping and this tough guy stuff, all of that stuff is a facade that's from some other artists, local artists that's trying to work and make a name for themselves. And because they need that cosign from low key, one of the biggest artists in the world that knows that if you get this artist to make, to do your song and don't say nothing about it, you're going to profit and becoming a very famous artist. And people like Vori, Cash Cobain, a lot of these people, they get garnered success after the reference tracks were released or after the release of Drake's song that was their reference tracks. After he got his successful number ones off of it, they got their successful careers off, up off wherever it was at. Basically, that, that was the, the step in the door, basically, is what I'm saying. And that's what Drake is. He's a gatekeeper. So meaning to where if you want to make it in, the, and if you want to really, really make it, you, most likely if you get a song to Drake and let him steal it, you're going to benefit a lot more than if you really didn't do it. And I, I guess, you know what I'm saying, you might get lucky like The weekend, who kind of just like just... After he did that, he was like, nah, screw Drake. I'm going to just do this on my own. And he went crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Party Next Door is supposed to be on the weekend level. But you know what happened? He stayed on that label. Just like what Academic said. You know what I'm saying? Those songs, Party Next Door never thought it would come out. That's why it sound, his reference tracks sounds a lot more raw. And that's what I'm saying. Party Next Door is so talented. 
he can create those melodies all for Drake, give it to him, and create his own music at the same time. That takes a lot of talent. And on top of that, Part Next Door wrote a lot of Rihanna songs. Wild, wild, wild thoughts, wild thoughts. Everybody like that song? Part Next Door, right? Work, 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 work. That's Part Next Door style, flow, everything. Ratchet, happy birthday. It's your fucking birthday. It's a celebration. That is all Part Next Door style, cadence, flow, everything. Guess who, t- guess who took that for the whole, if you're reading this, it's too late. That album was made by Quentin Miller and Part Next Door mostly. You know what I'm saying? Those are the artists that made Drake's career the most, especially when it comes to that singing rap stuff. That's all party, bro. You guys got to understand, like a lot of the stuff that that academics is giving credit to Drake for, for these great hits and all this stuff like that, is because he have a sweatshop of, of other artists who are actually very talented, but just don't have that label machine thingy that drake has behind him because he's owned by lucian grange who owns dj khaled which is the reason why dj khaled won't stand up for his own people and disown his own people is because he's owned by the same person that owns drake that's why he's always making songs with drake and talking about the drake verse because he has to promote drake because drake is an entity that is a billion dollar profitable entity that has a bunch of companies around him he's the biggest Biggest, most gatekeeping thing of the industry. When you think of the industry, Drake is the industry. It's not about talent and all that other stuff. It's about who controls the machines, who controls everything, who controls publishings of different artists, who controls uh, what artists drop and stuff like that. He could drop a cease and desist and you'll never hear that record again because of the fact that he owns music. So he won't even give your label clearance. The reason why Tim's uh, or Future had to go to Drake to ask Tim's for a clearance of of their song, bro, is because Drake is a part of this thingy, this gatekeeping thing, to where he has to press that button. All right, Tim's, you gonna drop that song with, with 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 Future and me on it? You know what I'm saying? We have to, you have to clear that sample because I own your music, basically. So you guys gotta understand, there's a lot of things that goes into play when it comes to Drake. It's just not him. It's about his business tactics. Is he didn't do it like Jay Z. He didn't create a Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? Did a whole bunch of stuff. He created an OVO sweatshop. He created a whole bunch of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? To try to make sure he gatekeeps so many artists to where like he makes sure your career goes downhill. That's why Kendrick Lamar, what he did against Drake was so monumental because that was a man going against the giant machine. That was the machine, like like the dude who killed the machine, the boogeyman. That was very intense and just not normal. That wasn't supposed to really happen. That's why Drake waved the, waved the white flag because they were starting to lose money. And once his image got destroyed with all of the pedal stuff like that, which is actual real stuff. But there, that's why he's moving to Texas where the legal age is a lot younger. So if anything ever happens, boom. All right, if I'm with 16-year-olds, apparently the legal age of consent in Texas is 16 or some weird stuff like that, right? So Drake moves there to make sure that a lot of his stuff is covered up. He covers up his track. He's he's like that. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of um people that keep him in position to make sure that he never loses this thing. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully a lot of people are waking up to him. I feel like academics is getting slapped in the face and forced to wake up to him because even he heard about the reference tracks and still was like, no, I don't believe this guy can make it for this guy. Well, guess what? That guy you underratedly put on the bottom, guess what? He made that song for your goal. So what does that make your goal? A phony. And guess what? He's the greatest actor to ever rap in the history of rap, in the history of entertainment. The greatest puppet in the history of entertainment. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It's being boy, I'm from the room. Peace.